Hello and welcome to TBP Insights. Today we're going to continue the video series with how to play small blind versus big blind three way focusing on limp pots. Now we, we arrive at this scenario because the button is open folded and we're in the small blind first to act versus our big blind opponent. So we've already invested 0.5 big blinds and we have various decisions that now need to be made. So we can open fold, we can complete or you know limp effectively by paying another 0.5 big blinds, or we can raise. Now, when it comes to our general strategy in the small blind versus big blind, we always recommend that if you're following any form of pre-flop charts or if you're following any form of set strategy, that you do amend this to the personal player that you're playing against as soon as possible. So if you're playing at the, the earlier stakes of the game, so the micro or the low stakes, then the player pool is quite large and there's a lot of recreational players. So you may find that if you are using a HUD, you don't have many hands on your opponent, so it's hard to deviate from general strategy, which is fine. But when it comes to, you know, the, the higher stakes or the more consolidated player pools, whereby you're finding the same opponents on a daily basis, then you will always look to tailor your strategy to your specific opponent based on tendencies that they um, show at the tables. However, today we're just going to focus on typical unknown recreational players. So... Our range is effectively, it's linear, it's exploitative. You know, we're we're playing a high VPIP. We are folding out our bottom range versus most opponents. However, there is instances whereby uh, previously we've played close to, you know, 100% VPIP versus the very, very passive recreationals. However, this is a strategy whereby you would need to look at changing quite quickly if you start to receive any aggression from them, be it, you know, ISO in, ISO jams, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with that in mind, today, as mentioned, we're going to focus primarily on limp pots. So we will just discuss our limping range. So effectively, by playing exploitatively, you know, we do have an element of balance there as well. So we will have, you know, suit combinations. We'll have some top hands. We'll have, um, you know, hands like king seven off, for example, you know, king five off, etc., etc. So we will have a wide limping range. Um, however, we're going to, for the purpose of today's video, we're just going to assume that we limp in the small blind, big blind checks in the big blind, and then we look at post flop. So when it comes to GTO, you'll find a CBET strategy roughly of around 32% in limp pots. The strategy we play, especially at the lower stakes and versus unknown opponents, is likely 65% plus of a CBET. And the reason for this is because recreationals and population of these players overfold versus CBET. So it's kind of auto profit by just CBET in a lot of structures. And then our opponent folds, we take down the pot. Now, there is certain board structures whereby we don't recommend C betting. And these are the structures whereby, in general, there's less fold equity. Um, so lower connected boards, you know, for example, 835 middle connected boards, you know, 1098, 868, 9 jack 8. And the reason for this is because these kind of combinations in the low connected boards, you know, recreationals will like to continue with overcards or, you know, they've got. Um, low holdings within their hands and that's the reason why they haven't made any aggression pre-flop with iso in etc etc so they're hitting these kind of board structures and the middle connected boards for example the the one we used is 1098 there's a lot of gut shots and there's a lot of combinations whereby recreationals we like to call once you know 6x 7x jack x any form of pair plus here on these kind of structures and the reason we don't see bet these boards in our specific strategy is because we make a lot of our ev on the flop by over see betting anyway because of how they fold versus, you know, population stats, et cetera, and the fact that they are overfolded. However, once we have made the, the C bet on the flop, we then kind of play a very shutdown strategy on turn and rivers because we don't want to risk the EV that we've generated on the flop by the C bet and ruin this on future streets. So if, for example, we're in a scenario whereby we've C bet with air on the flop, our opponent is called and it's down to the turn. If the turn has not increased our equity in any way, then we should look to play very, very straightforward, very ABC. We don't want to waste the EV that we've won on the flop. So it could result in a lot of check folds, for example. Um, you know, check, opponent checks back. And on the river, we've got then another decision. But in general, whatever we do on future streets without value versus recreationals is always going to be with a smaller size in and with EV and future EV in mind. So don't ever feel like because you've seen it on the flop that you need to now, you know, continue on the turn and continue on the river because recreationals are very, very sticky. 
One of the reasons why we go bigger sizing versus recreationals with our value is because they have a very inelastic calling range. And therefore, if they have a combination they want to call, then sizing doesn't really matter always. So with this in mind, if we try and bluff them or, you know, our future streets, then it's not really worth investing six big blinds on the river, for example, whereby a two big blind might do the same based on their hand holding. So that's very important information for the future. However, the purpose of today's video was just to explain briefly the small blind strategy and then how we maximize this strategy on the flop. Good luck at the tables.